What is good? We're back. Hopefully you just tuned into the riser side of things. Now we're going to talk about the fallers. We had a super flex tight end premium mock draft that we just did. Uh, and we're going to compare that to the ADP before the season started and see who's rising, who's falling. A uh, lot of good stuff over here. It's going to be kind of the moves to make this week. Buy, sell, hold some comparison for your pleasure. Uh, right off the rip, we got... Oh, there we go. We got Richardson down nine spots, down to two seven. Something to say not far enough, you know. But, you know, we, we talked about it a little bit on the last show, right? Richardson's probably going to remain on the buy list on every single show that we do for now until the season's sure. over, right? It's just, I, if, you, if you didn't watch this past game and you just saw the box score or even worse, the just your fantasy score, right? Mm -hmm. You say, ah, another terrible game from Richardson. Richardson really didn't look that bad in this game. And the last time we saw Richardson previous to that, he looked good against the Pittsburgh defense, and then Flacco came in and took his flowers. And everybody just loves Flacco because Flacco's producing for your fantasy assets. I get it. I, of course I want to be able to play Josh Downs and Michael Pittman. <laughs> it stinks course. not being able to do that. And, and it's really hard to right now to trust Anthony Richardson to do so. But... Joe Flacco has 185 starts under his belt, and we, we know that the, the number is like under 20 for Richardson here. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and in that game, they were talking about how he almost doesn't even know the questions to ask Joe Flacco because he hasn't played enough football where Flacco's like, he just needs reps. Mm -hmm. And the, the team's talking about how they see he's learning from start to finish of games. That's how green he is, right? And we see the physical tools, and we saw in this last game, you saw some good throws get completed. You saw a few drops happen and you know yeah you're gonna have to live with some bad stuff from Richardson but we've also seen the fantasy upside of this guy be ridiculous and right now the running around isn't at a premium we're trying to get the other things going and up the speed but he won the game this week and he could have won the previous game the Colts are four and three right right uh you know they're they could potentially have an opportunity here to go to the playoffs with a very young and experienced quarterback who makes some mistakes from time to time when you watch other quarterbacks Nobody puts together a highlight reel of the throws that they miss. Nobody gives, I mean, I shouldn't say nobody, but a lot of people don't give a shit that Jalen Hurts misses throws all the fucking time. Mm -hmm. Nobody nobody puts a highlight reel of Patrick Mahomes missed throws together. Nobody nobody cares that he's throwing picks. Only Brock, Obviously only he, Brock Purdy. He, yeah, well, Brock Purdy <laughs> because everyone's got, they've got take lock on him. Yeah. So they're just like, oh, well, you know, yeah, every time he fucks up, we're going to make sure we point that out. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that Richardson hasn't earned a lot of the negative connotations around him but you also ha have to like holy shit a guy that you knew was raw and that you had to develop is taking time to develop what a fucking news flash here for you yeah you know and and it's it's you know i, I got it like you, you you paid a lot of money for him so that you, you you want results now and we live in this now world and it's it's quite frankly getting pretty fucking depressing mm -hmm. to be in the fantasy football dynasty space how impatient everybody is and it's 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 a real sad state of affairs how quickly everybody's ready to just Oh, man, I can't wait around for Brees Hall anymore. He had two down weeks. And now guess what? The last two weeks were fucking awesome. Yeah. Like, it's just we're playing Dynasty here. And I get it. Like, Richardson, you paid up for him. So you want to get him to produce. But he's going to stay on the buy window for me, baby. He just is. And, and we know what it could be. And, and, and if it fizzles out, it fizzles out. But Justin Fields had plenty of time and, and plenty of times where his stock was staying steady and even increasing in some people and then people kept giving him the benefit of the doubt benefit of the doubt and there was a point where we say hey we got to hit the eject button here yeah and there may be that point where you have to hit the eject button with richardson i already knew what this was coming in so you should not be ready to hit the eject button just yet right yeah well we got spoiled with last year's you know two top five finishes and four starts you know and so we got spoiled with that so our expectations were set and then week one he throws the bombs and he looks ridiculously good so we got spoiled like you said from a guy who those tw you said joe flacco with 186 starts to anthony richardson's 20 that that's college you know he's got six starts in the nfl because he missed a couple games this year already i think that's yeah. total in college yeah plus the, plus the six here I you think mean that's like high school college and here yeah so okay even worse so it's a crazy low number, right? So the the like you said, I mean Anthony Richardson for us is or for me, and I'm and sounds like for you too. Like he's, 
He's on a lot of my teams already, and he's not going to be in a sell window for me cheap. Like he's just not. Could it get worse? Would I for not it? not sell him? I, I got no problem moving could, him in some stuff. If if if, if it, it depends get, on what your team's doing and, and what you need to have happen. Yeah, there was a really good, interesting trade scenario that Jay Lent put out together on the buyer ship on the riser show, but that involved Anthony Richardson. Uh, you know, could it get worse before it gets better? Absolutely, but. We've been doing this for a very long time, and obviously, we, I make the joke about potential gets people fired in the NFL. Mm-hmm. Well, in fantasy football, we have a long we have a longer leash, you know. Mm-hmm. Like I'm not getting, we're, you know, so like I'm not getting fired off my fantasy team, right? Uh, you know, the coaches may get fired for the Colts, but that's not I, that's not going to be this year off of Anthony Richardson. Right. You know, the right. coaches could get fired on the co- coaches get fired for a lot of like Daniel Jones is going to get ain't getting fired this year. No, I absolutely not. And if he did, he'd be the t- he'd be the number one coaching guy on the market. Like, you know, Daniel Jones might be getting Brian Dayball fired, mm-hmm. but Anthony Richardson's not going to get Steichen fired. Right. No, so, and, yeah, and, and, I, and I would be looking there's, for there's good supporting cast there. The offensive line. Good. They're without Jonathan Taylor right now. Defense has been banged up. They like they're they're and they're winning like they're four and three. They're not like one and five right now. You know what I mean? So, yeah. You know, I, I'm, I'm I'm okay with this, and I get it. You know, a lot of people are going to be upset, and it's, you know, it's the same shit we're dealing with Marvin Harrison right now. Everybody just hates this guy, and it's like you have to, again, a little bit of a faller here, but not much uh, from from old Marv. Uh, I believe it was three spots that he so, was down. Just one. Just one spot. So, you know, just I just want to reiterate, like, there's just the, the patience of not happening with with – what's going on like marv is playing x receiver out there mm-hmm. right he, he's, he's playing you know, big boy if, ball right if you're listening to matt Harmon talk about it he's trying to explain to you what's happening with marvin harrison right now you know they're day ball's trying to save his job so he's thrown the neighbors a million times guess what slayton went in there they threw it to slayton a million times slayton balled out right right so is slayton as good as neighbors no of course not yeah but if you throw it to somebody a bunch of times who's a decent player and you could scheme it open then that's what's going to happen Kyler's just not going to throw it to, Mal- to Marvin Harrison that many times, you know, mm-hmm. in this, they're, they're, you know, is, is Petsing any good at as an OC? I have no idea. Brian Dayball, we know, can coach up an offense, right? Yeah. So we're, we're in two little bit different scenarios there. And just let's just have some fucking patience on Marvin Harrison. There was a nice three stretch game there where he was great. You know, will he be great tonight? We're talking on a Monday. I, I'm not sure, but that's not going to change anything with how I feel about Marvin Harrison. This is fucking dynasty, man. You know, well, you said it. We, we were so, talking. And, sorry, real quick, just to finish this thought. Had a guy on Twitter was telling after we put a PSA about not trading Marvin Harrison. He said, "Well, should I trade for Nico Collins?" I said, "Sure, if that's what you want to do. I can't fight you about it. I, I don't. I don't mind that at all. Yeah. I, we know there's good production, and if you can trade good production and known production mm-hmm. for the the Marvs or the or the A riches of the world, I'm never going to begrudge you for that. That's fine. Yeah, I'm just saying, don't sell low. I mean, if but, you just but said just, like Tyreek Hill would have been a no go right. because he's 31. But just know that." Nico Collins was dead two years ago, and you're now trading him for the 101. I, that's just in perspective how quickly this shit can change on mm-hmm. you. And 90% of you out there don't deserve to have Nico Collins on your team because you talked some shit and said he was dead and he wasn't any good because he didn't produce. And because the situation, you know, whether he wasn't ready or the situation wasn't ready, the perfect combination has now happened. And now they need Nico Collins in the Texans right now. They're missing Nico Collins where nobody two years ago would have thought that. So just again, we just want to put that out there. Uh, and thought that was a good way to present kind of how this whole thing can come full circle. And I get it. You don't want to wait that long. Yada, yada, yada. You're, you, you know, you, you might be the, his thing was I'm win now. Well, do something else then. Don't trade. Right. Marvin. You know, if yeah. you can trade him for Nico, I'm, that, that's fine. Nico's on IR right now. But like, you know, known asset. That's fine. That's, that's OK. Like, I'm yeah, OK with that. But win now, that's fine. It doesn't have to involve trading away Marvin Harrison to get right. better. Right. Hey guys, a quick reminder to head over to patreon.com slash the FF Dynasty to sign up for a free membership to get access to the free Discord channel. Or hit your boys with the $5 holler and get access to extra shows, mock drafts, roster reviews, ADP, and player pages. All for your pleasure. Well, you shot right into Marvin Harrison, but the moves to make part of the Anthony Richardson sure. discussion... Next week, they got at Texans, and then week after that, they got at Vikings. He played well against the Texans last year, but going on the road right this minute, he's not playing great, and they probably said, will not you slow down on the run in just a little bit? Mm-hmm. We need you to stay healthy to get those reps. So at Texans, at Vikings. He's a smart guy. I think he's trying to get those reps. Right. There's a buying opportunity for Anthony Richardson right now, and if on one monster game could slam it shut for a minute, 
and he may or may not have that monster game in the next two weeks. Right. Just we know we know what the Vikings and Texans defense. Keep your do. eyes open for a binding opportunity, and keep your eyes open if it gets better. This year we we came in, and you have the opposite of of a guy like Jaden Daniels, and and you know the the analytics were telling you that because of Jaden Daniels sack drop back to sack ratio that he couldn't be any good and right? the age and the age right, right. so he, he couldn't be any good yeah well it's perfect you know? perfect comparison here of the two different polar opposites of guys who come into the league like you said the the anthony richardson comes into the league he's played barely any quarterback he's just a specimen and they want to check they want to let this man grow Jaden daniels comes into the league he's been playing he played in college for five or six years it's not his fault really covid year etc you know, it's not as bad as it sounds because of the COVID thing, but he does. He comes into the league, you know, a grown man, mm-hmm. you know, 24 years old versus some of the other college prospects. And he comes in with a ton of snaps under his belt. Yeah. All right. So Puka Nakua down 10 spots here. If there's a buying opportunity for Puka because people are out on Puka, you know, that I'm, I'm a thousand percent in on that. The heat has probably come down off of Puka, so there's probably some wiggle room in there to go purchase Puka right now for, you know, a first plus a little bit might even get somebody off of Puka right now. I don't know if you need the plus a little bit potentially. Yeah, you think the so. right person. I think, you know, we're, we're, we've been, we started this whole episode talking about impatience mm-hmm. and, and, you know, people are, uh, some people may still not even be a huge believer in, in Puka Nakua. Maybe they're worried about Stafford. Maybe they're worried about McVay. I would go press that, First round button, go send a first and, you know, Jamison Williams at, at the Puka Nakua owner and see if you can go grab Puka Nakua or, you know, just, I just pulled a name out of that. Yeah, you might get that there, snapped but. up. You, yeah, you might, you might go with two, three. I'd, before I sent that offer, I'd send a two, three in Jamison Williams for Puka. I'd keep mm. that first for a minute. Oh, okay. Amari and Jamison for Puka here. Mm. Yeah. Too easy. Yeah. There's so you know there's a move to make to so send a two and a three or you know send a two and Jameson Williams. There's no reason to get. I mean correct. Tank Dell and Godwin right there for Hollywood and Puka on the on the right there. Mm-hmm. Godwin straight up. Godwin straight up for Puka, which you know obviously right now you're in the win now situation, but you know long term. Yeah, Godwin's top three wide receiver right now in points per game. Puka, there may be a little buy window there. We got Herbert down 16 spots right now, and you know hey. Herbert coming in, we knew that scaling back on the passing attempts, right? We kind of knew that was built in a little bit. But sure. then you're also injured. No you're, wide receivers. Your wide through. receivers are injured as well. Yeah. Right? Quentin Johnston, injured. Lad, injured. banged up. Yeah, you bang, know? Bang, banged up. Um, Josh Palmer's you, your only guy you got to throw to. The right. Game. Disley, I think, right now is leading the team in targets. Um, as for, uh, This week, that is against the Cardinals. We're recording on Monday night. I think Justin Herbert's a huge buy for me. I, I like where the where the chargers are heading where I like Jim Harbaugh being in control. I like, you know, Hey, may, maybe it's not going to be a whole lot of 30 attempt games from Herbert coming up. But as things go, this whole cast of characters is going to continue to grow. The, the, the options that he's going to have is going to continue to grow. And really just having, I know everybody hates Quentin Johnson, but just having Quentin Johnson and a healthy lad McConkey on the field would, would change things around a little bit. And on top of that, if Justin Herbert can, can be healthy, he yeah. came into the season, just all sorts of banged up and then got re banged up. And it, we just, we haven't even seen just a healthy version of this offense since the jump. Yeah. First play of the game, first play of the season, then boys came out and chucked a Brock, mm-hmm. you know, and they, in the first drive, they went hurry up. Mm-hmm. Because everybody said, well, this is Harbaugh and they're, they've drafted the offensive tackle instead of drafting wide receiver and they're going to pound it. The first drive of the game for the Chargers was hurry up offense and they threw it a ton. Yeah. Do they want to go out and script 30 passes every game? But like there's, it's not hard to get there. Not hard to find yourself in a shootout in the, in the NFL either. You know mm-hmm. what? What has Justin Herbert done to fall down 16 spots? I get it. It's, you know. No Defense. production in the last two years for you. You're not loving it. Three five, a third round, Justin Herbert and Superflex, man, I, that feels great. That to feels me. absolutely that outstanding. That feels fantastic. So that tells me that there's a hopefully a buying window in uh, your actual league here. And and you know we just said a, a first for Puka. I mean a first for Herbert. Oh, See if for you get sure. it done easily. It's you know and and maybe people people won't do that. Uh, but you know would you trade Baker Mayfield for Herbert? Yes. I know he's way down there, and we talked about him on the buy show down here at 6, 5, 11. So, But somebody might just be like, hey, Baker's playing away. You, you know, he's leading the league in passing touchdowns coming into the league, like you said, or the week. He's uh, got like better weapons. He's right. got a better right to second. He's got a better offensive coordinator. He's in a better offense right to second. Everything's clicking for Baker. 
I'm tempted to talk about ceilings, but Baker's ceiling right now is leading the league in touchdowns. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I think that Justin Herbert is vastly underrated here at just 3-5, and I get it. You know, there's players up there. There's a lot of talent in the NFL right now, and running back talent, wide receiver talent, tight end talent, you know, quarterbacks up there. I get it. As I understand somebody has to go down. If people are rising, there has to be a faller, and Justin Herbert mm-hmm. hadn't. If Justin Herbert is not playing as good – as as Baker Mayfield right this second, but I would be happy to give Baker for Justin Herbert if I could. All right, tight ends. We got Laporta down eight. We got Kincaid down eight. Those guys are separated by about a round. Um, concern for either one of those guys? I mean, I didn't think that the volume was coming back to Laporta the way it ended up with the... the, the yeah, he's also uh, started the season hurt. Yeah, I didn't think Laporta was going to get the volume. The, the concern is for Dalton Kincaid. Like Dalton Kincaid was supposed to be the one rolling around with all the catches. I, I, you know, Laporta, we saw two weeks ago, week before last, he has a really good, like one target, but really, really athletic catch to, and got in the end zone. He got one t- catch for, for a touchdown. It looked good. It's just. It's, Kincaid was supposed to get all the digs targets. Kincaid was supposed to get a <laughs> every single one of them. 180 targets coming his way this year. It just hasn't been there. Every once in a while, he looks really good making a catch and this and that, but it is there is definitely concern for Kincaid. Now, they started the season running the ball a lot, and they were blowing teams out. First three weeks, the Bills looked like a you know Josh Allen was the MVP, and in the next three weeks, not so much. But now they're bringing Amari Cooper, and maybe think that juggles the things around a little bit. And maybe now the offense – I mean, literally – if you think about it, if now obviously retrospect is, is it is what it is, but like looking back at it now, we've only been in six seven weeks now. But like what what were the Bills thinking? Bringing in your your window to win is tighter. Uh, Allen's not old, but like what are you doing coming into the season with that supporting cast around him? Yeah, well, you, know? you finished the season looking pretty good in the first couple of weeks. You well, were you got, okay, you, and you then didn't now make it to the AFC Championship game. You didn't look that good. Now, you, now you're realizing that hey, we you know we could we could use we could use a player. Absolutely, and they went out and get. I mean, good kudos for them to make a move and not wait to the trade deadline. Yeah, and I don't think they're you paying know? Amari anything, which I think they said was a big reason that they got him. Sure, um, we will see this you know play out further. Everybody's going to be paying an expensive quarterback and the salaries will have to move around. Everybody's going to be paying an expensive quarterback and an expensive receiver and an you know, expensive defensive player at some point. And so the, the salary cap in, implications will you know fluctuate here and there. But uh, good, good, great pickup for the Bills. Mm-hmm. They didn't pay nothing for him. I would no. give a fourth or a fifth. I mean, that's a fantastic. Maybe a third. Fantastic addition for the Bills to go six, get Amari Cooper. Was it yeah. a three and a six? I, I didn't even know it was a third. But I don't think it's like any salary. Um, so that's that's good for them. So – yeah, I mean, Laporta, I, I didn't have him pegged as coming in here and, and absolutely slaying it. I didn't have him pegged as tight end win. Of course, you like Laporta. I, I think the tight ends will be just fine. I think all of them will kind of come back to life here at, at as we wade our way through the season. But, yeah, I mean, you definitely got to be a little bit concerned about, you know, Jamison Williams and hurting a little bit of Laporta. I, I do – Laporta not being healthy coming into the season, I think, was, was something well, to be, let's, you know, a little concerned about. But, you know, I, I think – if you can buy Laporta cheap enough, I'm I'm down with it. A hundred percent. The biggest thing, I mean, I'm a lion, so I'm you know that's what I'm doing here. Like, Jared Goff, had 18 for 18. Like when you're when you're winning games, throwing it 18 times. I think this week might have been 21 out of 23 or 24. Mm-hmm. Like they're first of all, they're not getting blown out, so they're not they're not in like shootouts. They did it. The the finish and score looked like a, a shootout with the Vikings, but it really wasn't a shootout. They got down 10, had to beat them up to take the lead. Played it slow for a minute. Then they had to fumble. Then they had to come back and, and take back the lead. You know, so like there was points in that game, but it wasn't like a a crazy shootout that you would think. You know, it kind of slowed itself back down. But yeah. the the way the Lions are winning right now and looking like the best team in the NFL, obviously you say that and Chiefs are undefeated, but they're <laughs> just they're just they're just they yeah. they're a lot more fun to watch than the Chiefs right now. But they, you know, they they not they don't want Jared Goff to be throwing it all over the place. Right. You know. Yeah, as so long as as long as Mike David as long as David Montgomery stays healthy, he got an ankle tweak and came back into the game, hoping that he's okay. Uh, you you know you see people get come back in like Joe Mixon did, come back in when he had the adrenaline going and before right. the swelling hits, and they can play for a little yeah. bit longer, and then they're out for a couple of weeks. Hopefully Montgomery's okay. They don't want to be throwing it around a lot. They don't have to be. That's right. not. But they want to pound you. And you, you got know, a good O line. You got a great O line. Best um, in the league. So you're looking at tight ends being down. Kittle's way up, uh, but all the rest of them are down. Kincaid, Pitts, and and um, 
Laporta. Laporta. All those guys are, are down around eight, seven, eight spots. So there may be a buying opportunity on some of the potential young elites in the league here. So don't let one bad chunk of a season distract you from how good the tight end position has been recently. Show, to um, show me, call out the name for the best buying opportunity that we can come up with right now. Well, there's two quarterbacks here. I mean, I mean it may not be who you're talking about, but uh, I, they were where I was going next was Trevor Lawrence is down 23 spots and Dak Prescott is down 24 spots. Uh, Dak at 5-4, Trevor Lawrence at 4-0-9. Dak at 5-4 is the best buying opportunity in Superflex right in a second. I mean, Trevor Lawrence is going to be fun, but he's never been on Dak's level as a passer yet. We want him to be. We think he can be. We hope he can be. Dak Prescott has been an elite passer of the football for a handful of years now, and he's a, and in Superflex, to get this man at 5-0-4, I didn't realize it. I got to leave here tonight and go send some offers. Yeah, I mean, I didn't know he just hasn't been playing well. People are frustrated with, the, with the Cowboys situation. Fantastic. Um, Take advantage. And, and they haven't been playing well. The Cowboys have been a bit of a mess. But I, I agree with you. That was those. That was my two picks. Yeah, I took Trevor Lawrence and Dak Prescott back to back in this draft in the fourth and the fifth round. Well played um, and didn't take a quarterback earlier. So, you know, some people would say, oh, I'm scared to death of that that lineup or whatever. But, uh, you know, obviously we're, we're doing a mock here in, in week six. Um, Jay, can you show Dak Prescott's points per game this year to to warrant that? Yeah, it's not it's not excellent. Yeah, so give me all the Dak Prescott I can get. Yeah, so there you know there's there's certainly some buying opportunity with Dak. There's definitely some buying opportunity with Trevor. People hate him right now. Hey, but Doug Peterson wore a hat this week, and the Jags are one and zero. How about that? You don't wear a douchebag headwear, which is actually not headwear. It is strictly for beach volleyball. It's the only acceptable time to wear a visor. Everything else, unless you're a woman, take the fucking visor off. You look like an asshole. I thought visors were gone. This is still around. Hate Jeez. it. Kirby Smart pulls it off. All right. I'll give Kirby a pass on that. Kirby Smart looks like he should be wearing it. <laughs> you know, at least the college football, it feels yeah. like, eh, you know, yeah, a little true. bit more fratastic. You're, 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 yeah, you're, yeah, you're yeah. all right. Doug Peterson, <laughs> you're all right. Take the sign, Bo. You won. I tweeted it out when the game started. I said, oh, Doug Peterson's got a hat on. Jags by 100. Nice. Let's go. And that uh, want to know. I mean, there's probably somebody <laughs> out there that could tell me how many times Peterson's worn a hat. Want to know. Uh, but anyhow, I thought that was interesting. Chris Olave's down 14 points. People love to hate him. I just feel like the opportunities haven't been there, and he's he's been hurt, and people are just ready to get off that wagon. That's fine. Uh, Jalen Waddle down twenty one is is pretty crazy. You, you, that's yeah. an easy buy. Easy. We know how good he can be, and but, but there is absolutely positively no way that the Dolphins come into next season. No, <laughs> without absolutely. the best backup quarterback that in was, the fucking league. That's that right? was that. So game. you could be scared of Tyreek Hill or uh, and Jalen Waddle, yeah. but there's absolutely no way that Joe Flacco isn't on right. the. The Dolphins or next year, Winston. or just somebody, somebody, yeah. That that came to me in the show a couple of weeks ago, and I and I will take it, and we can use it every single week because that's the truth. And now, I, I, now, I wouldn't buying, be surprised if they draft somebody and go ahead and pick. So like the Falcons, like you know, like that. That's actually wasn't a terrible idea, you know, because <laughs> the quarterback position is so valuable. I, I don't know if the two right, needs to fucking raise. Apparently, they can't even get a pass to Waddle <laughs> and fucking Tyree. You Gill. just paid him, and it wasn't enough. The uh, I, I don't know if trading for Jalen Waddle right now and putting him in your lineup is a good idea. No, you but can't play him. But but you can't play. But him. He's a great dynasty asset because he's still super young and he's a beast. All right, keep it moving. There was a few more that really stuck out to me. I mean, we know why CMC's down thirty three. Tank Dell, we know why he's down a little bit, not performing. But Travis Etienne down thirty three spots and Josh Jacobs down twenty in this one. The Jacobs one makes no sense to me. And then, you know, ETN, we know, you know, not really performing super well, been a little banged up through a, a few weeks here. Um, and then, you know, people just like everything, any backup running back that's performing well. And I'm not saying that Tank Dell is necessarily a backup. They drafted him to split yeah. carries with ETN a year ago and it didn't work out. And ET's success rate was really high. We talked about it on the show last week. ET was like RB3 last year. If anybody is wavering on ET and and you know it might might even suck for a year. I would I, I'm I'm very interested to see how they play the situation going forward because I can't imagine Doug Peterson is going to be the coach next year. Yeah. Um, now whether or not they trade ETN before this deadline comes up or what they're going to do with ETN because they picked up the fifth year like I didn't know a week or two ago there. But you know I, I found that extremely 
interesting that he was down at seven four, and well, I took him at seven four. Right, uh, you you you're grabbing these biggest fallers. You're taking all this value. It is like when you say if anybody's wavering, they're obvious waiver on ETN. And to make matters worse, you wavering on ETN not necessarily being as productive as he was last year when he touches the ball. Now you got Tank Bigsby, who is, which makes it look that much worse. So there's obvious wavering going on on Travis Etienne. So you could definitely get him for much cheaper than you can you could have before the season started. And like, yeah, you took the two quarterbacks. You know, you took Dak and and Trevor Lawrence. So who knows where my boy Dak would have ended up if you didn't grab him? And who right. knows where Etienne would have ended up if you didn't yeah. grab him? You're just just gobbling up value here in this middle round. This here. seventh round, you had ETN, you had uh, Pittman down 38, you had Pickens down 16. Now, again, week to week, Pickens yeah, probably this, bounced back this a little was, bit. This, this would have been different if Pickens had, you know, if you did this at now after that Monday night game or Sunday night game where everybody got to see Russell Wilson throw him the ball. Right, but Josh Jacobs, a 7'10", Bo, mm-hmm. RB 14 like i didn't pick him in the etn spot because i was like all right well let's see how far this goes Mm -hmm. see what happens here but he's top three in the league and carries on a great offense that i mean got a touchdown this week this week there just has not that jordan exploded jordan loves throwing the ball we've seen i can't remember who i was talking about a couple years ago of just a quarterback throwing the ball in from the you know 20 into 30 yard line the running back didn't get chances at the goal line like Jordan Love misses a couple games, but when he's in there, he's the only quarterback in the league that's thrown four touchdowns in multiple games this year, and he's missed two games already. <laughs> so, you know, so like Jordan Love is absolutely ridiculous, and the collection of wide receivers are ridiculous. So that should help the running back get in there and be running in the red zone, but they're throwing the ball touchdowns from 20, 25 yards out. We've been talking about Jacobs as a buy on this show for a few weeks now. Keep buying them. Let's go ahead and, and take a peek at a couple more guys, and then we'll wrap this up. Andrews down here at 9-12, down 56 spots. People have just given up on Mark Andrews. Got two touchdowns tonight, so that's coming up. Right. That, that'll that come back up. But, you know, just, again, we started this show off with patience. We'll end it with patience. Look, it didn't look – the optics weren't great for Mark Andrews coming in here, and, and it may be not quite getting back to where it ever was with Mark Andrews, as Zay Flowers obviously missing some time here. Uh, but ninth round, Mark Andrews right. is – just is such a great value, especially tight end premium. Yeah, especially what? how good this offense is looking, how much how many points they're scoring, how they're moving the ball, uh, and it's year two of Munkin, right? You know, we're yeah. not even in. You know, interesting. These Mark Andrews and Je- and Njoku are sitting right here, basically. You know, within two spots of each other, Njoku crushes it this week, down twenty three spots, and, and 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 Andrews has two touchdowns this week. The game's not even over yet. Uh, you know, we got in, in one league, we got offered um, uh, Dalton Schultz in a two or something like that for Mark Andrews two weeks ago. And you were like price check and you sent it to me and you said, what do you think? And I was like, nah, I'm just holding on to my Andrews. If it doesn't, if obviously I say this now and that was two weeks ago and he's has two two touchdowns in the game. Yeah, that was this, before he really did anything. So holding strong. That's going on while, you know, that's happening while we're doing this show right this minute. But like a- Andrews, even what take this two touchdowns away that let's pretend like I don't know that he has his two touchdowns now. But like, even if it doesn't pan out, like back to the Andrews that we like for for this year on this Ravens team in this iteration of this offense, like I'm just not going to be selling low on Andrews. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. So uh, a, a few more as we get out of here, just to show you where kind of some some value may lie. Ramondre Stevenson down 21 here. You know, we just talked about Drake May. We talked about how bad this offensive lineman Stevenson tied to tied to them boys for a while. Mm-hmm. He's probably their best offensive piece. Cheap Stevenson right now could be nice for you for the next, at least going into next year if you got a team that might be on the bubble of, hey, we could we could possibly do something. See see if you can get Ramondre for a two. Ricky Pearsall down 27 spots. I mean, I, I wouldn't want to give an early two for Stevenson. I think you could get Stevenson for a two, so be careful what, you, what you're trying to send over there. I think you could maybe get him for a, a couple threes potentially the R- ricky pearsall with Ayuk going out what do you think about that as a niners guy here obviously I, you don't have to tell me what you think about ricky Ayuk getting had hurt. no idea what the hell was going on on that field la- yesterday no how come i mean he just right. got shot right like, i know that's what i'm saying like they yeah. needed to put him out there he went out there he did his he, what you know, that, was but, that an inter- the interception where he cut it off like 10 yards short or something uh, that, i think it was ronnie bell 
I thought it was Ricky Pearsall. It was Ronnie Bell. Um, uh, on the one on the left, I don't. Yeah, the one on the left. That was the, so that was Ronnie Bell. I thought it was Pearsall. So yeah, I mean, I don't know how Ronnie Bell even plays anymore, but I don't think anybody that's paying attention. I don't think anybody that has Ricky Pearsall won't know that Ayuk's hurt and right. he's, and he's going to get a bump here. But like, there's potential here for a, you know this is a first round rookie for the and Niners. Somebody might be looking to get out too, so you can, maybe can buy buy a little Pearsall. Yeah, um, and then one one more before I get out of here, uh, Javante. Well, and I'll hit some rookies real quick. Javante Williams is down 38 spots, but it's just it's nothing going on over there in the run game. He's catching the shit out of some footballs. I, I think he's penny stock right now that you buy Javante Williams super low right now and, and just sit him on your team. Don't worry. Obviously, he scored three touchdowns this past week or whatever it was. Nice call um, on the penny stock. Yeah. But I, I just he feels like a, a, a nice buy for me. And obviously, again, scored a bunch of touchdowns this week. So maybe not quite the week to go after him, per se. Mm -hmm. I can't imagine it's going to stay up there like that. But nothing is working for the Broncos offensively. There's no, you know, there's no wide receivers that you're worried about. Bo Nix is like leading them in rushing. Right. You know, I, Javante, I don't believe is going to be there next year. They'll they'll he'll go somewhere else and I think be one more year removed from that terrible knee injury and just getting back to the Javante and we we see how good the hands are with Javante he can be a pass catcher so I think there's a good penny stock there with Javante. Well, he did just have two touchdowns, so it's not that, as much. What, yeah, like three pennies this week. Yeah, maybe maybe if he doesn't have a great game, maybe back down to two pennies next week. For the Pearsall, real quick, it looks like the uh, Niners have the Cowboys this week and yeah, then a buy. Right. So the post buy rookie bump coming for Pearsall potentially, and it a lot more likely than it would have been. Uh, with like with uh, Ayuk not getting hurt. Yeah. Polk down 24 spots. Like I said earlier, if he could catch the ball, he'd be having a little mini breakout right now. It mm -hmm. stinks. But you might be able to buy Polk for cheap. Corum's down 23 spots. Might be able to buy him for cheap. Uh, and then uh, Marshawn Lloyd was down 19 spots. Obviously been on IR. Uh, but, you know, there's, there's some rookies right there that are all just getting mm -hmm. compressed, pushed down right now that, you know, haven't done anything to be pushed down. They're just not playing. So, they're not getting, you know, any right run right now. So yeah. potential buy windows for those guys. So, all right. We appreciate you guys. If you have not already, go check out the free Discord. We got a $5 holler. You get an extra episode every single week over there. You're going to have rankings. We'll have we're doing mock drafts, all that good stuff over on that side of things. If you're not subscribed, please do so. If you haven't hit the five-star review, absolutely hook your boys up. I'm not even sure why you haven't done that yet. We should have, <laughs> have 10,000 plus five-star reviews i don't even understand how you can't just help if you've, if you've been listening for a while and you haven't done it come on come on boys and you know one more other way to support the team go grab a shirt revelry bruco in the uh in the link here and and go grab a wonderful ffd shirt very comfortable check that out support the team and, and you get a nice shirt out of the deal so very much appreciate you guys until next time we are the ffd we're gonna get the ff out of here Peace.